me something, right? Yeah. Jane Bozis, hi. The the much uh, noticed author of this book. Bombay Balcham. Bombay Balcham with a lovely title and an equally lovely cover. That's uh, one of the villages, Matar Pakadi, where? Uh, no, this is actually um, a community that I come from, a neighborhood, Kavel, in Kavel. South Bombay. So some of the houses there, the few remaining houses, they look a lot like this. There's so a tiyat the going on. There's a tiyat going on today. Called the Bell of Kavel, written 100 years back by the first by that party artist, no? So it's being showing it's showing at uh, Kandoli, which is about 10 wow. kilometers from here, at 7:30. I didn't know. Anyway, that. this yes. is off. We are, I'm sorry for taking you off track. No, this is actually interesting. I would like to know more about. I'll tell the Bell you. I'll tell you. Yeah. So tell us about your book. Well, um, so this is a fictional um, uh, novel, fictional book. Uh, it's based on um, a small Christian community in South Bombay, very much inspired from the neighborhood that I come from, which is Kabel. And um, what I do with this book is trying to trace the story of a neighborhood um, over a span of 80 years and how it used to be once a very thriving and alive and rich neighborhood and how with you know changing times, with people moving abroad, the gentrification of uh, um, the place, the, not only the neighborhood but uh, the, the, the city in general, how it impacts a neighborhood like Kavel and um, what and what becomes of it. So this is the story of a neighborhood and the people residing in this neighborhood. Um, I, I chose to tell it through the people but perhaps uh, I would look uh, at Kavel as a protagonist of the book. It, it got well received, no? It did, it did. I was Fortunate. Much discussed, much discussed. Um, perhaps I couldn't say so, but yes, it was. It was. Uh, um, to, it came as a surprise to me that people started taking uh, interest in neighborhoods like Kavel, and I think that was a good uh, uh, thing that probably happened because of this novel. Bombay is a big publishing center, and uh, you know many authors competing to publish books there. Was it tough to get it published in Bombay, or did it? You know, actually Delhi is a bigger publishing center, but for us, I think Bom Bombay novelists sometimes really have very interesting stories about the city that uh, uh, that allow you to see and imagine Bombay in so many different ways. And um, for me as an author, I wanted to tell a story about Bombay that nobody had heard about or had probably read enough of, and that was the motivation for me for, for doing this book, actually. Um, I wouldn't say it's uh, very, very competitive. A writer who has to tell a good story, they will find their way to tell it. I was a journalist. I had written a book before, Mafia Queens of Mumbai. So I Mafia? Uh, Mafia Queens of Mumbai. I see. Yes. Uh, and, uh, Dealing with? It was about, the. It, it's non-fiction. Non and it's about uh, the real, uh, like female gangsters from Bombay. So that was when, in my early years of journalism, so I had done that book. Um, so perhaps that was a, a little foundation stone for me, my journalism and a book already, which made it easier for me to publish my second. Jane, which are the books uh, relating to the Goan, Christian, East Indian, Mangalorean communities dealing in Bombay, set in Bombay? See, so there are lots of different kinds of books, very few books perhaps written um, about uh, the Bombay Catholics, if you're talking about fiction. One is, of course, we have Jerry Pinto and his M and the Big Boom, which talks about a Goan family yeah. uh, living in Mahim. Um, then there is another book by Ivan... Uh, Ivan Arthur. Uh, Ivan Arthur, A Tale of Two Villages, yeah. which is about two East Indian villages in Andheri. Um, Kevni and the other one, I can't remember. So Kevni is one of the villages. They were like, you know, uh, sister villages, neighboring villages, and uh, how... Um, how competitive and edgy these two uh, neighborhoods are. So it was a very funny and interesting book. Um, so that is. Another I have it. I have it in my collection. Yeah, yeah. It's a good book. I'm it's not a great reader of fiction, but I have it. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> yes. should. I should. So that is another uh, book uh, that I read. So I think very, very few books about Bombay Catholics per se. Other communities, there are lots of them. You'll have Rowanton Mystery writing about the Parsi community in his books. And Leslie D. Noronia has written, but I don't know if it's based in Bombay uh, that you drop in. No, it's probably not based in Bombay, though he was. It's based in North India. There you are know? a lot of Christian authors, yeah. like, I mean, Catholic authors, but 
I don't think you're specifically talking right. about Bombay stories. Um, you have Naresh Naresh Fernandez's Taj Mahal folk song, but that talks about a lot of Christian musicians, born musicians. But that's non-fiction. Yeah. And that's about uh, the jazz uh, era in Bombay. Yeah, history and a yes. lot of other books yes, are there. Yeah. Yes, yeah. fiction. I think very few and far between. Interesting. Uh, what's your background, journalism? Yes, I'm a journalist. So I've been in journalism for 14 years now. I'm currently the deputy editor at Sunday Midday, I see. Uh, which is the sen- Sunday edition of yeah, uh, Midday. Yeah. So um, um, there I cover books, I cover heritage, urban planning, environment. So it's a vast portfolio. Uh, but that informs a lot of my fiction. Um, I'm also uh, currently working as an oral archivist. Um, and I'm doing this project called Soboika. Yeah, so I was going to ask you that. Tell yes. us about Soboika. This is the project dealing with uh, documenting? Uh, this uh, this uh, project, or this archive actually uh, aims to document the stories of Catholics from South Bombay. And again, uh, it, the, the idea or the inspiration for Soboika came after Bombay Balchao. And I realized that you know people were taking interest in neighborhoods like Kavel after reading the book. But um, what are we doing to preserve the stories of these places. My book was fiction. It was not even tell the real stories of a um, uh, story of yeah. this place. So that is how I decided to start a people archive project where the people who shaped or built these neighborhoods would tell their stories to us um, through oral memories or material memories. So that is how uh, Suboika had started. We started it last year so it's really in its, in its early stages, very nascent stage. Uh, we've about, done about seven interviews but from neighborhoods from different neighborhoods of South Bombay. Like, I'm not only talking about South Bombay, we've called it South Soboika because it... Soboi stands for South. So, Sobo. So, in Bombay, everyone who comes from South Bombay is called, so, uh, a so you know, a Sobo. Soboite. A Soboite. Soboite. Like so white, so yes. like so. Bo. And um, Goan Catholics are called Bombay cars, yeah. and you know, in in Goa, for instance. So we just punned on that and said, called it Soboy car. But Soboy car is not only about the Goan Catholics; it's about Catholics who belong to the Konkan belt. So it would also include. So it also includes. Uh, yeah. So it includes uh, Catholics from, um, say, Karnataka, for instance. Um, it's we are not uh, including East Indians because they are the natives of Maharashtra. The, that part of Bombay. We are talking about Christians who came from parts of Goa and Mangalore and made. Out. They would, but the idea is to understand the migration story of Christians who moved, relocated, and made Bombay their base, and why they made Bombay their base, and then why they left Bombay. So why did Bombay become the center that drew Christians from? say Goa or parts of Mangalore. A lot of life rivalry between these gems communities. There, yes, no? yes, it's always so been there. I think there. Mangaloreans and Goans don't get on in Bombay, but they get on in Goa in that <laughs> sense. That's funny. Is it? Is it? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah apparently. In, here the rivalry is not so pronounced. Too. Okay, okay. In fact, we don't even feel it. Most of it. A little bit, but... But there it's East Indians versus Goans versus Mangaloreans, so it's a large pool. Um, here also but we get on quite well with East Indians. Although we are not genetically connected to them, unlike the Mangalorians who we are genetically exactly. connected with. You know, we get on quite well. I don't know. I don't, I don't feel any sense of rivalry here. No, it's not there anymore. It, used, it perhaps there anymore. used to be there. No, in, it's uh, understandable because competing for the same jobs and things like that. Yes, yes. But I don't think that is the it's case It's one marriage anymore. market also now. Yeah, it's a very, very large marriage market. Everybody has an East Indian or a Mangalorean in the family so it is it's i don't think that kind of competition what are you asking for from people we're asking for their stories so it's just i wouldn't even say asking we're asking them to revisit their stories about how their families came to bombay to take the trouble to create their stories yeah (laughs) yeah so just tell us what how what brought your families to bombay what your families did what was it like living in a catholic neighborhood um how did you all celebrate your feast? What were the celebrations like? And when did they feel the need to probably leave Bombay, move abroad? Or whether they, when did they feel that they did not belong to the city? So this will come in the shape of photographs, videos, uh, text yes. and interviews? Yes. So it will start with interviews. And obviously these interviews will be done on vi- videos. We can do Zoom online interviews or we can do physical interviews. And then we also, if they are willing... Uh, we will also ask them to share some of their photographs from that time and um, hopefully we are building an archive that researchers and scholars can have access to to understand how Christians moved and made Bombay their base. So interesting. Thank you so much. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you again.